Okay, today we're going to be looking at rationalizing denominators with an irrational part. So I've got three formulas up here. For the first one, if we have a number of the form 1 divided by the square root of a, what we do is we multiply top and bottom by the square root of a, and because these are the same numbers, we're essentially multiplying by 1, so we're not changing the value of this fraction. And what we end up with is that the square roots on the bottom, they just cancel out, so we get a on the denominator, and we've moved the third onto the numerator. Now, if we have a fraction with a denominator involving a rational part and an irrational part, what we do is we take that number, we change the sign, so this is plus, we change it to a minus, and we multiply top and bottom by that number. So a plus the square root of b, and we multiply by a minus the square root of b, divided by a minus the square root of b. And just as before, these numbers cancel out, so we're multiplying by one. We're not changing the value of this fraction. And what we end up with is that the rational uh, denominator is a rational part. So we get a squared minus b, and on the numerator, we get a minus the square root of b, which is just the same number as before with the sign changed. And similarly, if we have a negative sign to start off with, we change the sign again, so negative goes to plus, and then just as before, the new, uh, denominator is a squared minus b, and the numerator is the original number with the sign changed. So one question you might have is, why do we want to do this? Why is this useful? And if you think about how a computer would evaluate this fraction, it would much rather have to divide by a rational part, or a real number, a whole number, um, as opposed to an irrational number, which is infinitely long. So a computer would have to approximate this. Whereas if you're dividing by just an integer or a fraction, then it's gonna be a lot easier for a computer to do this. So this is kind of the motivation behind why you want to uh, rationalize denominators. So what's important is you remember the method of how to do this. So I don't expect people to uh, memorize the formulas. I certainly don't. So I'm gonna go through some examples now and we're just gonna go through how to apply the method. So first off, if we do 1 divided by the square root of 5. This is the same as 1 divided by the square root of 5 times, use this formula up here, times top and bottom by the square root of 5. So as I said before, this cancels out and we're left with 1, so we haven't changed the value of this fraction. But what we get on the denominator is the square roots cancel out. So we get the square root of 5 on the numerator divided by 5. And this is the rationalized form of this fraction. Okay, let's do another example. We'll do the square root of three divided by the square root of 15. So now we have an irrational part on the numerator as well. And just as before, we're going to take the number and multiply top and bottom by the denominator. So times the square root of 15 divided by the square root of 15. And the square roots on the bottom, they're just gonna cancel out and we're gonna get the square root of three times the square root of 15 on the top, and on the bottom we just get 15. But we can uh, simplify this even more. The square root of 15 is the square root. So the square root of 15 is the square root of three times the square root of five, and this is still divided by 15. And then we have the square root of three times the square root of three. They cancel out and we get, just get three. So this is three times the square root of, uh, sorry, five, 3 times the square root of 5 divided by 15. And then 15 is 3 times 5, so the 3's cancel out. And we can simplify this fraction to just the square root of 5 divided by 5. So this is exactly the same as what we had before. So we see these are two alternative forms of writing this irrational fraction. But what we want is that they have the same rationalized form. So the square root of 5 divided by 5. So now I'm gonna do some examples where we test these formulas. And let's start off with one divided by two plus the square root of five. So a is two in this case, and b is five. So what we do is we take that number, write it out again, and then we multiply top and bottom by the denominator with the sign reversed. So we multiply by two minus the square root of five, divided by two minus the square root of five and we're just multiplying by one, so we're not changing the value of this fraction. So what do we get? We get two squared, so we get a squared on the bottom. Let me just write at the top again, we get two minus square root of five, 
And on the denominator, we get 2 times 2, so that's 2 squared, which is 4. And the irrational part, they cancel out. You can see that because if we do 2 times the uh, minus square root of 5 and 2 times plus square root of 5, that's just going to cancel out. And then for the irrationals, we get square root of 5 times minus square root of 5, which is just minus 5. So this does line up with this formula up here. And then 4 minus 5 is just minus 1. So 2 minus square root of 5 divided by minus 1. Dividing by minus 1 is the same as multiplying by minus, minus 1. So it's the same as minus the square root of 5 minus 2. Oh, what am I doing? One second. Same as minus 2 minus the square root of 5. And we can just distribute this. So we're going to get the square root of 5 minus 2. So that is the simplified form. And it's not even a fraction, so that's even better. OK, so now let's do an example to test this formula. We're going to do 1 divided by 3 minus the square root of 7. And just as before, the method is exactly the same. So what we do is we take the number and we multiply top and bottom by the denominator with the sign reversed. So we multiply top and bottom by 3 plus the square root of 7 divided by 3 plus the square root of 7. And this number is just 1, so we're not changing the value. Um, so what do we get? On the numerator, on the top, we get 3 plus the square root of 7. And then on the denominator, we're going to have 3 times 3, which is 3 squared, which is 9. And then the irrational parts cancel out because minus, 7, minus the square root of 7 times 3 plus the square root of 7 times 3, they just cancel out. And for the last part, we get minus the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, which is minus 7. So this is exactly what this formula is saying. We have 3 squared minus 7. And then 9 minus 7, that's obviously just 2. So we are left with 3 plus the square root of 7 divided by 2. And that's the rationalized form. OK, let's do one final example. This is going to be a bit harder. We're going to do 1 divided by the square root of 5 minus the square root of 3. But hang on, we have two different irrational numbers this time. So this doesn't really line up with our formulas up here. However, we are going to use exactly the same method. It works for any kind of two different irrational numbers or rational and irrational numbers. So what we do is we take the number, 1 divided by the square root of 5 minus the square root of 3, and we multiply top and bottom by that number with the sign reversed. So we multiply by the square root of 5 plus the square root of 3, divided by the square root of 5 plus the square root of 3. And just as before, this is the same as multiplying by 1, so we're not changing the value of this fraction. So what do we get? We get the square root of 5 on top plus the square root of 3. That's the numerator. And then under the denominator, we get the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, so that's just 5. And then what do we have? We have minus the square root of 3 times the square root of 5, and plus the square root of 3 times the square root of 5. So that's just going to cancel out. And then for the last part, we have minus the square root of 3 times plus the square root of 3. So this is going to give us minus 3. And you can see this is kind of the same formula, just instead of a, we have the square root of a. So we have a squared, but a is square root of a, so that just cancel out, and we get the original number. So what do we get left? We have, we have the square root of 5 plus the square root of 3 divided by 2. And just as before, the denominator is now a rational number, which is what we want.